Now, there are people that hate this class, and there are people that thought it was easier than what they assumed it was going to be. And I fell somewhere kind of in the middle. Stick around, I'll tell you why. D089, Principles of Economics. Um, like most of the other business core classes or accounting type classes, uh, there is a ton of information in this class. Just, just an overwhelming amount of things that you have to learn, uh, unless that you already know a bunch about how economics work. But if you're fairly new like I am, like I'm assuming most people are, because who, you know, rigorously studies economics, uh, you're going to have to do some studying on this one. Now, this course is broken down into three different main units. Uh, and I know what you might be saying to yourself is, well, wait, John, you just said that, you know, there's a ton of information. There's only three units. Well, hold off because there's 10 different modules uh, within those units. But it's broken down into three main, you know, tenets is uh, like the economic way of thinking, which by and large is the easiest part of it. A lot of that is, I don't want to say it's common sense, but with a little bit of studying, you can ace that one. Uh, most everybody that I've seen that takes this course knocks that one out of the park. It's pretty basic, simple stuff. But uh, the real meat and potatoes of this course are microeconomics and macroeconomics. Uh, microeconomics kind of goes into um, things like su supply and demand and elast elasticity and uh, production costs and things like that, like more kind of like business side, but macroeconomics kind of focuses more on the market and the government side of how the economy works. Uh, but like, yeah, just within those two microeconomics and macroeconomics, there is just a ton of stuff that if you're new to uh, economics, that uh, it's going to take you a while to get through. Now, I don't want to make it sound like this course was necessarily hard because, um, well, as far as like my personal preferences go, I actually enjoyed the course. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting how this stuff works. Um, so like, I don't want to actually say for me personally that the course was hard, but like a lot of the other business core classes, there's just so much uh, is what kind of makes it hard. Um, you know, you, you have to go through so many things. So uh, they have 10 different cohorts that you can watch and they're all like an hour long-ish. You know, let's just say the average is about an hour long between all 10 of those. So that you're looking at right there, in and of itself, 10 hours, uh, unless you put it on two times speed. But some of them, um, you know, certain courses or certain cohorts uh, at WGU, uh, I can't really watch on two times speed. Uh, some of them, because the people, you know, whether they talk fast or slow, you can't hardly understand what they say on two times. So you got to drop it down to like a time and a half. And uh, one of these people uh, were like that for me. But the lady, I can't remember what her name is, but she's the main course instructor for principal of economics. Uh, she did a pretty good job on most of the videos. Um, so, and I didn't dive into the material, the reading material too much. Um, but I just, what I did is I watched those 10 videos. And again, you have to take notes because there's just so much information that you have to take in. But I watched those 10 videos and then I immediately jumped into the PA and uh, this is what I got on the PA. Now, uh, after watching those 10, I thought I was gonna have to jump into more of the reading material because I was like, well, I can't take the LA if I haven't even passed the PA yet. Uh, but I started doing some research and uh, again, I'm gonna say if you haven't joined Facebook, uh, WGU Accelerators, if you haven't followed that page on Facebook, go do it. Uh, it's a great source of information to see how to get past courses, or get past courses fast and uh, just a lot of good advice from people who have taken courses and you can ask questions and everybody on there has been pretty great about uh, helping each other out and stuff. But I've seen a lot of people say, uh, you need to look up Brian, um, I can't remember his name, but he's one of the instructors, his name's Brian, uh, and you need to watch his videos because it's really good like course reviews, you know. Um, so I thought what you had to do is ask the instructors to send them to you, but what you can actually do is go on Panopto, which I've talked about it before, but if you just go to Panopto, you type in your WGU login, you can access the site and all the uh, information. They have like all the videos of like almost all uh, WGU courses. But if you go into Panopto and you just type in DO89, then all of his videos will pop up. It'll, it'll say like module one review, module two review. It has all 10 module reviews on there. And he goes over like the first 15 minutes of every video, he goes over uh, like the kind of main things you should know about it. And then at the end of it, he actually gives you a quiz. 
which I think is a much better way to uh, like learn the material is if you can actually do a quiz. I've said this before about uh, PA courses, but I wish WGE would offer multiple different PAs uh, for pre-assessments for courses because you can take a PA one time and you see how you did, but uh, after that, you're pretty much just memorizing the answers, you know, after that. Like, you're not really learning anything or picking anything up. You're just saying, like, oh, I got this one wrong last time, and I know that's not the right answer, and I remember this one being the right answer. And that, I don't think, really helps you. Uh, but with this one, him going over, like, at the end of all the videos, he goes over, like, maybe 10 to 15 questions, and he goes over why the answer was wrong. That's another thing with the PA is, is like, if you get an answer wrong, it doesn't explain to you why you got it wrong. It just says, well, you need to study this more. It's like, well, that doesn't really help you, you know, figure out why what you answered was wrong. But with this one, if you, you answer it and then he goes over why, which, why each individual answer was wrong and why the right one was right. So I thought that was really, really helpful watching those uh, 10 review videos. So anyway, I watched those 10 like hour long videos uh, and then took the PA, failed it. Watched those 10 review videos, which I thought were much better. I took the PA again and passed it really well, but I don't know again if I'm just memorizing answers or if I was absorbing the material better. I don't really know which one, but I felt pretty confident and I felt like I was picking up the material pretty well. So I uh, scheduled the OA. Uh, I took the OA. Um, I felt like it was pretty easy compared to the PA. Uh, there was a lot of much more um, simpler, I don't know really know how to even describe it, simpler questions. Uh, it didn't feel like I feel like there was less trick questions and actually you know uh, i don't know if i'm talking out of school here or whatever but there were several questions on brian's videos that i actually think were on the oa i don't know if they were the exact same question but they were close enough to where it made me wonder while i was taking it like is this the same question that i've already answered before uh but again there's no way to see which answers are right and wrong on your oa but it did feel like Maybe there was even a couple of ones that on the PA that were the same or very similar. I don't know, but all I will say is I felt like the OA was easier than the PA. All right, now tips and tricks. Um, again, there is a lot here, but I'll go over a couple of things that I thought were the most beneficial. Um, you really need to understand how the graphs work. Uh, you really need to understand what shifts supply and demand, and you know if it moves up in quantity and price or if the whole entire curve shifts you need to understand that uh, one thing that i found really really helpful is actually making a graph and then making the supply and the demand curves on it and then that that'll show you uh when they ask you a question whether like you know demand needs to shift or if supply needs to shift or if it's just a quantity question or not You'll understand what I'm talking about once you get into the course, but so there's like six different graphs that you need to learn, uh, like the possibilities, uh, possibility curve, I can't remember what it is, uh, it's like PPF, but you need to learn that, um, you need to learn the Phillips curve, um, you need to learn the difference between uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous, het, het, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but like, so what I did before I actually jumped into the OA is I had like the six graphs that are the most important because when they ask you questions, you'll be able to kind of figure out what the question, the answer to the question is by seeing how it shifts on each graph. So uh, what I did was I wrote down all the graphs and I used a whiteboard and a calculator for this because on the AOA, there is some things that you're gonna have to use a calculator for. It's pretty simple math, but I mean, it's nice to have your calculator with you. The calculator that provide on the AOA sucks. Uh, but so anyway, memorize all the graphs and then when you start your OA before you even start answering questions write down like dump all of the graphs in your mind onto the uh, whiteboard that way you can like when they ask you a question about okay is this a shift in supply or demand and does this increase the price or increase the quantity or whatever you can just look at your graph and see how it shifts on the graphs that you made now that might be kind of confusing to somebody who hasn't started this course but you understand it once you actually jump into the course that you on most the questions the graph will answer the question for you you just have to know how it shifts uh supply demand aggregate supply aggregate demand things like that now i apologize i know that's wordy but it'll make sense to you once you jump into it but anyway so in the course resource resource there is a uh, formulas you should know and there's like a concentration ratio and hhi and elasticity ratio and a bunch of them um I don't know if you necessarily 
you should you should memorize them because there was I don't know which OA you're gonna get, but uh, me personally, I only probably used like three of them on the OA. But I mean, it, it is beneficial to know how they work, and they're not super complicated the equations. Like elasticity is just the percentage uh, quantity divided by the percentage change, and a lot of them like a lot of them are like that. The HHI is you uh, looking at different firms or businesses and seeing you know how much of the market share I guess they have. Uh, it's something like that. Well, the constant no, that's concentration ratios, the top four firms. But anyway, there's probably like 10 different ratios, but I only remember using a few of them on the OA. So I guess that's up to you. Uh, if it's you're having trouble memorizing all those, just know that you might not need to use all of them. But that's a decision for you to make. Now to suggest uh, how long that this course is going to take each individual person, I really don't know. Uh, on that Facebook page, there's people that have said they've knocked it out in three days. And there's people that said they've been stuck on it for you know two months and it's the devil. But uh, me personally, I just watched those 10 recorded cohorts, watched the 10 reviews, um, and then I was able to pass it by a pretty good margin. Um, so you take a bunch of notes uh, and watch those and you should be fine. Or at least I was. I didn't really dive into the reading material all that much. But yeah, not a bad course, just a ton of information to take in. But I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, but that's all I really got. Uh, moving on to uh, Integrated Physical Sciences next. So. Everybody says this one's actually a pretty easy course, so I'm going to try to knock it out in a couple days, but we'll see how it goes. I said a long time ago I'm going to stop giving predictions because it never seems to work out, so maybe I should have shut my mouth on that one. Uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.